Welcome to this introduction to using Corpora for first-time users. We'll be looking at the web interface english-corpora.org and in this example we're going to look at the differences and the similarities between the two adjectives beautiful and attractive. So the first question we're going to ask is what's the difference between beautiful and attractive? And to answer this question we might turn to a dictionary. Now if we look for the word beautiful in the Cambridge Online Dictionary, we find as a definition very attractive. Now that's not particularly useful in trying to find out the differences between beautiful and attractive and how they're used in context. By using corpora we'll find out that beautiful and attractive in fact collocate with different nouns and that's how we can tell how they're used differently in different contexts. But first, let's turn to the second question we might ask ourselves. Which of the two adjectives is more frequent in English? And to answer this question, our first point of call might be a simple Google search. So I've looked up the word attractive in Google and I end up with a lot of hits. We're looking here at over 600 million results. But what does that mean? Not a lot if we don't compare it to anything. So now let's look beautiful. And we find that beautiful appears to be considerably more frequent. These are 4 billion results. So according to Google, beautiful is more frequent than attractive. But what does that mean? In which context are these words used in? And how representative is Google of the English language in general? we might find that turning to corpora is a more fruitful solution. This is where english-corpora.org comes into play. When you first log on here, uh, you'll need to create an account. So you'll need to register, which is free, and you'll have to give a valid email address to do so, so that you can then log in. Now, I'm already logged in, so I can get started straight away. To answer uh, the first question as to whether um, attractive or beautiful is more frequent in English, we might start with a search, say, in the corpus of contemporary American English, the COCA. This is a fairly large corpus with one billion words of American English, and the texts that are included in this corpus go from 1990 all the way to 2019. And it's what we refer to as a balanced corpus, so it tends to be um, representative of American English as a whole. If we click on the corpus name, we end up with a search box which enables us to search this particular corpus. So here, um, the COCA. And let's start by looking at how frequent the word attractive is. So we type attractive and click on find matching strings. And here we have the frequency. So it tells us that attractive uh, can be found 23,000 times in the COCA. And again, without any form of comparison, this is not particularly useful. So let's compare it to beautiful and see if it is really more frequent as Google suggested. And indeed, beautiful is considerably more frequent than the word attractive. We could ask whether American English is representative of the whole of English, and of course it's not. And that's why another question that we might ask is, um, is beautiful, for instance, more frequent in British or in American English? So we could look at the different varieties of English. Now to do so, uh, we will first look up beautiful again in the COCA, and then we'll open a new tab. And here we will look at the BNC, which is a British national corpus. Now you can see that this is a smaller corpus, 100 million words, it's British English. It's not as recent as the COCA, but it's also a balanced corpus. So it um, attempts to put together lots of different genres and registers of British English in this case. And if we now look up the word beautiful, so now we're in the BNC and find matching strings. We can see that beautiful occurs 8,000 times in the BNC and it occurs, let's see, 120,000 times 
in the coca. But remember that the coca is a much larger corpus than the BNC. So it doesn't make sense at all to compare raw frequencies. So in our search, we need to click on options and display and change that to per million to have a comparison um, possibility. Now we're going to get results for um, the frequency per million words. Now with the English uh, corporate.org um, interface, you'll frequently get this page, um, which just requires you to be a little bit patient. If you don't have a premium account, then you'll need to wait a few seconds until you get this green bar, then you can click on uh, continue the search and we're ready to go. Now we still have the raw frequency here that we had earlier on, and now we have the per million frequency. And if we do that for the BNC as well, then we'll be able to compare the results, even though the corpora are of very different sizes. So we now find that beautiful has a frequency of 83 per million words in the BNC and of 110 in the coca. The next question we might ask is in which text register or registers is attractive most frequent. So we suspect that there are differences between the words beautiful and attractive, and maybe those differences are to do with text types. So do you think attractive is more frequent in conversation or in fiction or perhaps in academic writing? Um, this is again something that we can do um, and we can look at using um, the English corpora.org interface. So we type attractive again, and now if you go um, to sections, this is where you can see the different subcorpora of the coca. So the coca includes TV and movies, um, so scripts um, from TV and uh, TV language and movies, blogs, um, web language, spoken language. These are transcripts of conversations, face-to-face um, -face or telephone conversations fiction, magazines, newspaper writing, academic writing, and so on and so forth. And if you scroll down, you find that these subcorpora are again subdivided. But for now, we're going to ignore this. This is just for your information. And instead, um, we're going to click on chart. This now change this, changes uh, what it says here. And that means that we can find how attractive is used in the different sections, in the different subcorpora of the coca corpus. So let's have a look. So we find now um, that we have the frequency per section here in um, number of words. So this is, um, and then in per million, which is what we're interested in. This is something that we can compare. And uh, what we can see with the bar chart uh, fairly easily is that attractive is most frequently used in magazine language and it's the least frequently used in conversation. Now we could click on this bar to find out in which context um, the word attractive is used in magazine language. These here um, are what we call concordance lines and they give us the context in which the word attractive is used. If you want to see uh, more context then we can click here for instance um, on the line and then here we'll get expanded context. If we want to have a look at some of these uh, concordance lines, then I would always recommend taking a random sample so that you can see them um, in a random order. And this enables you to have a better quick overview of some of the patterns um, that might be um, to be seen in the concordance lines. So here to select a random sample. Now let's go um, back to our chart. Uh, we could look at the word attractive in spoken conversation by clicking on this bar and see here we have a lot of results, um, nearly 2,000, so it makes sense to take a random sample of 100 um, because that's all we're going to manage to look at for now. Another question we might ask is which nouns are most frequently associated with the word attractive? And equally, uh, which nouns are most associated with the word beautiful? Now, to do this, we're going to look at the BNC. We're going to look at British English. In the BNC, uh, we have here the option collocates. And this enables us to put um, the adjective we're interested in here, um, here beautiful. 
and we're interested in noun collocates. So if we click on POS, which stands for part of speech, we can insert a noun. And because in English um, adjectives come just before the noun, we're going to be looking here at the nouns that occur one to the right of our adjective beautiful. So in blue, we have the word that you've put up here, we've put beautiful, and we're interested in what comes after beautiful, the beautiful car. That would be then um, plus one to the right. We're not interested in the words that come before beautiful because they're not going to be uh, nouns that are qualified by beautiful in English. So let's find collocates of beautiful, noun collocates of beautiful. We find at the very top, uh, woman, um, girl, uh, next, thing, place, and now we have women in the plural form. Now, depending on what we're looking for, we might actually want to tally women and women together um, for what we're looking for. Let's change the settings. Let's go to options. And now, instead of grouping by words, we're going to group by lemmas. And lemmas refer to um, the head word for instance, what you end up finding in a dictionary. So in a dictionary, you wouldn't look up women, you would look uh, women up. And so those are the lemmas. Let's look at what that looks like. So now we have our result as lemmas, and you can see that's the case because of the square brackets. And we find that woman is at the very top, which means that the adjective beautiful is by far um, most strongly associated with the word woman. And then we have thing, girl, place, garden, and so on and so forth. So it's interesting to see that already we can see a number of semantic fields emerging here, lots of people, but also landscapes and countryside, for instance. Now let's do the same thing with attractive. So we're sticking to lemmas, and we're looking at noun collocates of the adjective attractive. We also have woman, but it's the second um, most frequent collocate. Uh, feature is the most frequent, and we have proposition, man, option. Um, so we have a range of um, common nouns, uh, like woman, like girl, but we also have new ones, like feature, proposition, option, alternative, which we didn't have with beautiful. And another um, way of comparing two similar words, uh, which works very well on this interface, is the compare function. Now here we could compare attractive and beautiful, so we can write two words. And again, we're going to be interested in nouns that are associated with these two adjectives, so we can stick to one to the right for our collocates. And what we end up with here are um, is a contrast between these two adjectives. So we find that the noun proposition is very, very strongly attracted to the word, to the adjective attractive, as opposed to beautiful. So that means that in the BNC, the word proposition is qualified by the adjective attractive in 45 instances, but there are zero occurrences of beautiful proposition. Um, similarly here, uh, beautiful day occurs 46 times in uh, the BNC, and whereas attractive day occurs zero times. So we can see um, the kinds of nouns um, that are frequently associated with attractive, but not with beautiful, and the other way around here. And as we scroll down, we find here in the lighter green words which are sometimes associated with the other adjective. So for instance, man is more frequently associated with attractive in 38 occurrences, but sometimes there are 12 occurrences in the BNC of beautiful man. So this is a helpful function um, to differentiate uh, the meaning and the associations of two similar words. That's it for a first introduction of some very basic functions on the English-corporate.org interface.